Hello and welcome to Topsa. My name is William Lebowski, and today we're getting right into it right away here at Charlotte already, jumping, making moves into the entrance of the first chicane. Uh, I figured if you weren't going to move, it's time to get moving because this uh, track is, uh, I think, maybe one of the biggest worries on the calendar, if not the biggest uh, technical worry that we were gonna uh, come into uh, contact with because this track is just so tight. And it, I think it's a lot of fun when you're uh, racing something like a Skippy or uh, and you know anything smaller uh, <laughs> and uh, less powerful. But uh, here at this track, uh, in, in these big GT3 cars, it's just a, a contest of who can keep it the cleanest. Uh, and you'll see that the walls were going to play a big uh, role in this race for everybody. And not just for me, but you know, for everybody, just a little bit of contact. You think that you might be just fine, and in other sims, I would have been totally fine with uh, give you wheel damage or give you some sort of rear end or side damage or just do something that affects the the top end speed of the car. Uh, just something uh, to to make your car not 100%. And I have found, especially uh, you know, at smaller tracks, you don't need 100% to still keep up. And that was a little bit of a theme. Uh, that we had through this race at i'm not sure uh if, if it's going to oh never mind i'm not going to spoil anything but there's going to be some times in this race where we get a little bit of contact and i have to make some decisions uh and uh we just keep on trucking you see we way overshoot the chicane and tim goes by us but you'll notice that we are already up into the top 10 uh just by keeping it clean. Like we said, we tapped the car, uh, we tapped the wall rather, a couple times throughout the race at this point. Uh, maybe a couple off tracks, but we haven't had any incidents. We haven't been involved in any kind of wrecks. Uh, we've stayed clear. Uh, there haven't been any around us to get caught up in or anything like that. So really, uh, here we go at the end of the first stint. Uh, we can see her in sixth place. Fifth place just really just, Tim uh, just takes a hard break in the middle of the racetrack not cool but um i will take the position go up to fifth place uh at this point in time we are just over an hour into the stint uh 40 seconds over an hour so that's looking good for our fuel strategy as we dive in and um i'm trying to see here the the bouncing off the wall uh contact yeah optional repairs uh three uh minutes basically and here i was googling whether or not i could get half of my optional repairs just by taking half of them or if i had to wait until they were all done so we did half and then went i just decided it's not going to be worth it to sit for another minute and you know 15 seconds uh even if we had the damage or not the car was moving fine uh, i don't think we uh, did get those repairs that we sat for i think we just wasted time uh, so lesson learned, but we did pop out just outside the top 10 and you can see now we're moving our way back in And so I'm feeling really good about where we're at and I know I just have to continue to keep it clean And the car has been limited a little bit like I said, uh, or rather like you saw uh, We didn't sit for our full optional repairs. So we do have that little bit of um, Uncertainty in the car whether uh, you know finding where it is. It's just keeping it stable uh, extra cautious and extra careful just because uh, you don't want whatever a little bit of damage you have to uh, rear its ugly head and uh, affect your race and whether it, whether it be a corner a, a pass whatever uh, on the brake sometimes just random times uh, damage affects the car in ways you wouldn't expect so we're trying to keep it clean we're trying to keep it clear we're chasing David Brown down this was the most exciting part of the stint and it's really hard to show exciting uh, endurance racing in videos uh, because this moment was uh, you can see you know, what an hour and a half of uh uh, in the making uh, reeling this guy back in uh, this David fella and in uh, trying to get close and in, in trying to keep it clean for that entire uh, time so uh, this was uh, some really solid racing but again it doesn't show up in the video just because it was um, clean and boring uh, so to say especially at this track if it wasn't this track there would be more involved but it was just keeping it clean at this track meant something different speaking of keeping it clean boom we get caught up uh, I should have uh, backed out of that I thought I was just I've I've been really having this mentality with uh, accidents ha uh, in front of me that I just need to be decisive quick and I'll be fine and I was decisive and quick there but I did choose the wrong decision and it didn't help me and so uh, 
I paid the price, but then anyway, we see somebody else paying the opposite price uh, behind us, in front of us. Uh, and it's just another reminder to keep things cool. It's a free position for us late in this race. Uh, here we are, some very cool lapped traffic uh, letting us through. Uh, but now we're as close as we have been to David. We're just off the back of his bumper. And I, I don't know, like, I... I I guess I'm having to say it again because just the footage on and of itself isn't really selling it. This was, uh, we were, we have seven, uh, liters or, I'm sorry, gallons of fuel, uh, left in the, in the car at the end of our stint. So this is like two hours coming to a head and we're going for a, a pass on this guy, uh, it, it, for a top 10 position. So this is really all adding up and we were able to make a nice switch back on him and, uh, David doesn't put up too much of a fight going forward when we're able to go right around. So again, I know the the old saying would be, show us it's exciting, don't tell us it's exciting, but it's hard to show you over in a reasonable amount of time uh, something that exciting that happened over you know two hours. And so here we are now diving in for our second and final pit stop, uh, and we just have an hour, an under an hour left in this race. It's going uh, great on fuel. If I was smart uh, and you know savvy, maybe I would go less than uh, a full tank. But I figured it's not worth uh, messing around trying to figure out this or that or um, anything like that. So here we are. We're coming out um, in fifth position or uh, in in the top ten, and here we have the end of our race and. Uh, I make a big mistake. This is a lapped car. He's 13 laps down. Uh, I kind of don't know what that is, but I got sidewinded here, and I did something even worse than was just done to me. So, so the thing that I've been complaining about for like the last two videos, I just did it to someone. Uh, so that's something I really have to think about with eye racing, and I didn't realize at the time that the guy that I did that to was the leader of the race. So shame on me. Uh, egg on my face. I've uh, in a little bit of um. Uh, I don't know, a little bit of justice in, a, in the opposite kind of way, so to say, uh, because uh, I am now the one who has to, instead of not having to deal with anybody else's mess, I'm the one who has to, I cause a mess, right? So now I'm the one, uh, instead of complaining about it, I'm realizing maybe I should have just shut my mouth a little bit more. Uh, in the last couple videos, maybe I should just kept it a little bit clean. And uh, here the car is pretty wrecked, uh, pretty undrivable. Um, and uh, I'm pretty much uh, thinking that I can limp my way back to pit road, but I'm also realizing that we're so late in the race and it's not going to matter. And car just undrivable uh, as we go around here. We are at 19 <laughs> X. Uh, and so it's just time to, I think, call it a race here. Uh, with 10 minutes left, you can see the toss uh, and the, ups the, the anger. But anyway, we'll see you guys in the next one and hopefully less rage.